H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. We need Erin in UFT. What's Erin? It's nothing but a plugin. Right? Erin is nothing but a plugin that is required for you to recognize the application and the test. Erin's are required. for UFT to recognize the objects on the application and the test. So what it means is, for example, so you are testing say Java application so you have to make sure Java adding should be installed along with UFT and also it should be checked on this add-in manager window. So that's where actually when I install UFT, I also, uh, I also install along with UFT, these are the add-ins. By default, so the UFT will support, these are the default add-ins. You will get the default add-ins, ActiveX, Web, and Visual Basic. These are the add-ins that you get by default once EFT is installed on your system. But other than this, if you are testing, say, Java application, you are going to install you are going to install the other add-ins explicitly. That means when you are installing EFT, part of that wizard is going to ask what are the add-ins that you need. On that window, you are going to select I also need Java add-in or I also need .NET add-in. Once you select that, then once the EFT is installed, Whenever you start uh, this UFT on this add-in manager, you see the other add-ins. Otherwise, all you see is ActiveX, Visual Basic, and Web. If you don't install any add-ins along with UFT, okay. So these are the add-ins uh, that are required. Suppose if you are testing a web application. So this add-in is required. That means you have to check this add-in in order to test any web applications, like say bankofamerica.com, att.com, or bcbs.com, any web applications. If you are testing, say, Java application, then you have to make sure this Java add-in should be checked. Then only you can create any scripts on the application developed on Java Technology. Okay, so these are the add-ins uh, that are really required for you to recognize the application and the test. Yeah, so nothing but the like you can say it's not uh, compatible. Compatibility is a different issue. As you can say in order to recognize the application environment like what are the technology that is used. So you need the required add-ins. Okay. Suppose if you're testing an application that is developed in Java environment, 
you have to have Java add-in required. Okay. Um, basically, like uh, if you already install EFT, so that's what you can do. I mean, for in our classes, you don't worry about the other add-ins. All we need is the web add-in because we are testing the web applications. But in real time, say you already installed the EFT, and if you want the other add-ins, so you can also, you need not reinstall. All you have to do is uh, go to this control panel, and then wherever this, uh, you see all programs installed, right? Go to this EFT, and then you can also repair. If you select this repair option, then that time you should be able to select the other add-ins. Okay, if you already have this learn point for installed, go to this control panel and then install programs, select this VFT, repair, and then you should be able to select the other addings in case if you need it. But as I mentioned, in our sessions, you don't need any other addings other than this web adding. If you had a web add-in, does it support all the objects in the browser? Yes. Most of the time, you don't get any problems if you have a web add-in selected in order to test the web applications. Okay. But sometimes what happens is, uh, I mean, like uh, you look at uh, the record and playback the scripting, right? Sometimes that may not work with some of these web applications. So that's where like uh, you end up with doing some descriptive programming. Okay, that part we are going to look at. How many browsers does uh, UFT support? Um, basically, till 1.5, we support uh, Chrome, um, Chrome, Firefox, and Internet Explorer. But in 12, it seems like they added some more browsers, like uh, I think it's Opera, and uh, some other browsers are added, 12 version. Okay. So Visual Basic is not a browser. It is a, a standalone application. Okay. Visual Basic is a technology that is useful to develop the standalone applications. Like, so for example, if you look at... Um, this is uh, a standalone application. See, this kind of applications that will be developed using Visual Basic or .NET or some other application. Okay, Java standalone applications. Okay, Visual Basic is a technology from Microsoft that is useful to develop a standalone application, desktop applications. So if uh, like uh, that is that is what uh, in real time projects because you don't have much information, right? On which platform or in which environment this application is developed. So you are going to interact with the development team. You talk to the development team and try to understand. All you have to know is if this application is developed with Java or .NET or Visual Basic or Web or some other environment. So that time we are going to select the appropriate add-ins here. Like if the development guy says, hey, okay, you are going to create some scripts on the application development on .NET, then you have to make sure this .NET add-in should be checked. Then you can create any scripts against that application. Okay? So basic thing is, once you understand the application environment, you are going to select the appropriate add-in from the add-in manager, and the rest of the process is same with respect to the application. Only it matters to select the appropriate add-in or to recognize the appropriate add-in for your application. The rest of the process, how you develop the script, how you create the frameworks, how you do the VB scripting, it is same. Okay. All right, so is this clear or any questions further on this add-in manager? So the first thing is you need to 
talk to the development guys and try to understand the application and so you are going to install that is the starting point okay so here we're going to talk to the developer development team and then try to get application environment or the technology then accordingly you're going to install the required add-ins along with UFT along with PFT and then on add-in manager make sure the add-in is selected so this is the preliminary steps anyway like we are going to do once you start working on a project okay uh, visual basic in is for standard yeah it's for standard applications um yes most of the scripting will be in visual basic because that is a native environment in uft we be scripting is a native language in uft so most of the scripting we do on vb script um uh, Will learn point five be compatible with GC twelve? So you're talking about ALM? Yeah. Yeah. So it is compatible. No, it's it it is not going to be different. See the scripting language, the VB script is a language in EFT. It's not going to be different from different applications. Whether you test application built on Java, whether you're testing a Java application, you're testing .NET application, or any other applications, how you develop the script is the EFT follows the VB script. See, you have to, you have to understand the scripting part. See, the UFT always follows the VB script. That is the script how we develop. But applications are going to follow different languages. So, so you have the applications developed on Java or .NET or some other technology like Visual Basic, VB. So, but UFT is always going to develop the script using VB script only, irrespective of what application you are testing. So this is the technology that is used by the development guys to develop these applications. But from the tester perspective, the UFT always use the VB script. It's not going to be different. Okay. All right, so that is the primary step that you're going to do. Um, no, VB script is not object oriented. Any kind of scripting languages are not object oriented languages, okay? Just there because they are very simplified, the scripting languages. Okay, so in our case, like we are testing some web application. Uh, so you're going to start with Just all I need is web adding, right? Nothing else is required. Then you might have a question, is there anything wrong if I select all add-ins here? So is there anything wrong if I select everything from this add-in manager? 
W series is basically like uh, this is a Windows uh, technology, right? Nowadays, uh, you see some of these applications are developed using this technology, like the Silverlight, right? So it gives a better look um, to the web applications. Okay, so that's where like this is a technology frame. Microsoft, it's a Windows. I don't, I don't remember what's this expansion. WPF system Windows. Okay, so here my question is: Is there anything wrong if you select all add-ins from this add-in manager? Yes, it matters. You see here, there is a red line here for optimal performance and update identification reliability. Select only the add-ins that you need. What happens is, if you select everything, the UFT works, but it will be slow. That means the UFT simply confuses what application you are testing. So are you testing Java application? Are you testing .NET application? It's going to take a long time to identify what application you are testing. Or if you simply say, no, I'm testing this web application. I don't any other add-ins. Then it's a straightforward that QTP will recognize that web application and your script execution and update identification, it's very fast. Because you are saying, you are educating UFT, yeah, I'm testing only the web application. I don't need any other add-ins, right? So that's what like, you have to remember. Uh, whenever you're testing, say, web application, why I need other add-ins? Select only the web add-in and then go ahead with your scripting. Okay. So that way, this is going to start once you, once you select the required add-ins. Because nowadays, most of the time, you're going to test the web applications because most of the applications are web-based nowadays. What's the advantage you get with the web-based applications compared to the other standard applications? Available from anywhere, right? So web applications are available from anywhere. Now, actually, like we go to the next level, mobile applications, right? Even mobile applications, everything is on your hand. Like even you don't need any computer, you don't need any laptop, kind of thing. So these are the like the things are moving from standalone to web, web to mobile. Okay, so this is the environment and. Um, Okay, Sirisha, coming to your question, ActiveX. ActiveX are basically the called third party controls. Okay, ActiveX controls are the third party controls. These are third party controls, or third party objects. Suppose um, you, if you look at uh, this application, so once you log in, you see here. There are different controls of the objects, right? You see, this is a text box, and this is a list box. This is also the other list box. This is a button, and so on. Then, when you look at this part, here, how many text boxes you see? Is it one text box or three text boxes? So, there are three text boxes here, right? One is to enter the day, a month, the day and year. So this is basically called an ActiveX control where the developers, when they develop this kind of applications, so they're going to put more than one standard control. Like this text box is a standard control or this uh, 
list box is a standard control. But when it comes to this date control, where they combined more than three text boxes into one object. So this is let's click on an ActiveX object. Okay. Where you'll get functionality of more than one standard object. Okay, ActiveX objects are the third party controls. Okay. So you said the ActiveX used in uh uh, uh, web applications also? Maybe. Sometimes like uh, you come across any date controls particularly in the applications. Yes. So in, so in that, that case, the ActiveX, have... con the ActiveX controls are the objects mostly like embedded in the applications. Okay. So this is an ActiveX object that is embedded on this application. So should we not add uh, ActiveX add-in as well then? Where? In the add-ins, when we select add-ins. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah. Just you have to make sure that ActiveX also should be added because you don't know where you come across that kind of ActiveX controls. So, yeah, it's always better to add ActiveX also what, irrespective of what application you test. Okay. Okay, so, so this is the anyway like the environment, like how this UFT looks. Like you will get the menu options, the toolbars, and so on. And uh, they are going to talk about here what this real UFT, like as I mentioned. So the true unified functional testing combines quick test professional and also the service tester. So as you can read whenever you get some bit of the time, just read this documentation. And also, what are these uh, new and improved checkpoints in UFT? They, in addition to the checkpoints, what we have in earlier versions, they added a couple of more, like uh, the, the the content checkpoints, like how you're going to verify the PDF files and other stuff. And also, this is uh, another recording they added inside recording, and then they added some of this. Uh, browsers like uh, Firefox and uh, also API testing. So particularly when it comes to this API testing, so you can test your web services, you can you can test the APIs. Um, APIs also like you will get from different sources like REST uh, APIs or UDD, um, UDDIs. So you can test any converse this API APIs using this UFT. Okay, that part anyway we're going to look at later. We're going to do this API testing. So there are the announcements they did. And um, so now just so the the basic functionality is like anyway, uh, most of you guys know how we're going to do this record and back stuff. So whenever you create a new test. It's going to give you different options, whether you want to create a GUI test or API test. Business process testing is mainly uh, useful when it comes to this enterprise application testing, um, particularly when you do this SAP, uh, any kind of enterprise resource planning, right, ERP application testing. There we talk most of these business components and then business process testing. Um, Probably I'm going to give you uh, one case study because uh, very recently I, I attended one webinar and uh, they are talking about the scriptless automation. That means you need not worry about the VB scripting, that kind of stuff, even on UFT. That's very, really, very interesting and promising tool, all it generates is the code in, in Excel sheet. So it's really interesting. So probably I can give you that kind, that, that scenario towards the end of this sessions. Maybe it's, it's, what I'm thinking is it's going to catch the market very soon. That means it's, it's basically on top of, that's the kind of framework they developed 
on top of your team. You need not worry about the VB scripting, you need not worry about how to create the scripts and all the stuff. And also it's very quick to develop the scripts. You are going to save a lot of time. Okay. So I will give you that part um, maybe towards the end of the classes. Okay. So they recently uh, came up with that kind of framework. Even they have some proof of concept also, like how much money they saved and how much time they saved. Okay, so let's start with this GUI test. Um, so you can create a folder wherever you want to save the scripts. So I'm going to create some folders here. Uh, click on this new folder. And then so I'm going to give the script name. So something. So login script. And uh, now let's uh, open that application. Since I'm not doing any uh, record and playbacks here. Just we do the real scripting part, how you do in the projects. Okay, so this is the application uh, we work on. This is a CRM application. Uh, probably, like uh, I will talk about the CRM application uh, sometime, maybe in the next session, sometime. So we're we are going to work on this application. We have a lot of functionality, and that way, of just you will get uh, really uh, some kind of good project exposure. So once you log in here. So then you will get all these modules. So you're going to develop a lot of scripting. Once you are familiar with how to develop the scripts with this kind of applications, then um, I'm pretty sure you can handle any kind of applications in the real time projects. Because we'll get uh, most of these complicated scenarios on this application, like the web, how to handle the web tables and the web elements, how to handle different links, tabs. You'll get a lot of combinations here. So that's what actually I told you. Once I say, okay, this is the assignment you have to do. If you really work on that assignment, you can come back the following class. Okay, this is what the script I developed, but this is where I get into the problem. That's how you learn how to develop the scripts on this application. Okay, because in real time, most of the applications you come across is typically similar to this. So you have different modules here. Um, so you're going to and also, each module contains different components here. So, if you go to say export site, so you will get different components. So, what I'm trying to do is probably like we create different components, right? Part of this uh, BPD, I will explain towards the end of the sessions. We create different components and then how to test the business process. Like, accounts is a business process and you get different components like create contact or create account, find account, match accounts. And so on. So we're going to create different scripts. 
or different components for each uh, sub functionality what you see here the cons is the module these are called different components okay so that way um, I will talk about these modules on the CRM what is what is CRM and then uh, how to work with these different modules and then uh, we'll work more towards the scripting part after that but today just I'm giving you some of these basic concepts how to do the scripting part in the real time if it is um, okay so this is the application uh, I think some of you guys have seen this chart window. So that's the link. Um, the username and passwords. But don't change any of these usernames and passwords for this. Just keep use this username and password. It's going to the password. Okay, so that's the username and password, the link. Just save this information and then you can play with this application. Okay, so how are you going to do the scripting part here? So you're going to create a first shared object repositories, right? Go to resources and select object repository manager. Okay, so this is the object repository manager, and you're going to select objects, add objects. Okay, select object, add objects. Click anywhere on this page, and so you will get this hierarchy: browser, page, and child objects. Right? That's the application hierarchy. The web applications you will get a browser is the parent page is the child and the web element is a grandchild right so that's how actually the the hierarchy what you get once you try to add this object and if you want to add all objects from this window if you want to add all objects from this login page you're going to select in this hierarchy the page object because I want to add all objects from the page and then you're going to click OK button so you will get uh, this filter window and on this you're going to select uh, just accept the default object types and click OK So that way now, just you will get, you see, all objects were added to this shared object repository. Now we are going to save this object repository file, save. Then you can give the object repository file name, login, war. And that is the extension is dot .tsr file. Right, object repository extension is dot .tsr. Click OK. Okay, so once again I'm doing, so some people are asking how to do this. So please pay attention. Go to resources, select object repository manager. Then you're going to select object, add objects. Click anywhere on this page. You will get this hierarchy. In this hierarchy, you are going to select the page object and click OK. And then, so you will get the default object type selected and then click OK. That's it. Then you are going to save this 
of the tubercular gland. That's how you create shared object points. Then close this object points in manager window. And now you can do the scripting part. Select this uh, action one tab. Basically, these are the three different tabs you see in the So you see the action one and the login, that's where you will get the flow, the action flow. Action one is, this is uh, the editor. And this is, uh, you can toggle between the editor and key value by clicking on this button. So these are the two different views in UFT, the editor and keyword view. This so the first one we talked is the add-in manager. And the next one is types of views in UFT. Editor. And keyword view. So what is the difference between these two is how you work with UFT? Both views are same. Say so whether you are working with the, the editor. Editor is basically you can directly do the scripting part. Right, so this is the one. Say so for example, I want to open the application, right? So I want to do some scripting here. System util dot run. And then, so I'm going to say www.gmail.com. That's how I can open the application, right? If you do this kind of scripting in the editor, even if you go, go back to the keyboard view, you see the same scripting. Basically, both, both views are same. Right? So even here, like if you want to generate uh, any script, so you just click on here and then say select step generator. And then, so you're going to select, say, utility objects, system util. Then you're going to mention here, www.gmail.com. Because what this, the keyword view is going to give you is kind of a user-friendly interface for the beginners, like you feel more, little bit easy to work with this keyword view. You see, it did it it does the same thing how you do in the editor. Okay. You see, it generates the same line. Whether you work with the editor or the keyword view, both are same. You see the same script in both the views. With all your comfort level, how you want to do the scripting. If you go to the keyword view and say you want to generate the next line, right? So select this line. So you will get this drop down menu. Select say step generator, right? Select this step generator. And then, so in this window, you're generating a step in your script. Okay. And you're going to select here, functions, utility objects. And then you're going to select system util. Mention here, so www.yahoo.com. Right? Then, if you go to the editor view, this is the same line. So you can also do the same thing in the editor. System util dot run www yahoo.com 
So it's the same thing when you switch back to the keyword view. Okay, both views are same. What are the changes you do in the keyword view? You see the same changes reflected in the editor and vice versa. And here in the keyword view, you will get, uh, yeah, that's what, like um, even once you feel, um, maybe once you work with the CFT maybe one or two weeks, then you feel more easy to work with the uh, editor, right? Because here, oh my gosh, I need to select this one, and then select this, and then select this, and then enter the URL. Hmm, no. Instead, I go to the editor, and I write down system .com. Yes, that makes easy. So that's what the people prefer to work with the editor instead of the keyword view in, in the real-time projects, because you're most familiar with these features, then you feel more, you feel better to work with the editor. H2K Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.